everybody, and welcome back to the next part in my Creating a Great Tone series for our Line 6 Helix. This episode, I want to talk about a topic that I feel is very, very, very important. And it's one I've been thinking about talking about for a while. I want to make sure to present this in, in the proper way. It is the topic of volume level matching when we are comparing different audio sounds. Now, what could this audio sound be? Well, I'll give you a few examples and the ones that I'm going to go more in depth uh, in this video about. Uh, one could be, as we all do, uh, when we watch audio demos on YouTube or, or get audio samples online comparing uh, maybe modeler A to modeler B, uh, you know, preset A to preset B within the Helix, or, you know, uh, a real Marshall Plexi, this is a famous one, right? Real Marshall Plexi versus, you know, uh, modeled Marshall Plexi, okay? Um, we all watch those and it's a wonderful time we live in to be able to just sit in the comfort of our living room on whatever uh, our monitoring system is and to be able to compare these pieces of audio. So that's one place we'll talk about. The other one is something like what I do uh, with our dialing in series. I get a lot of folks approach me and send me messages with a, a, a audio clip or a YouTube video saying, I, I'm really trying to get this sound out of my Helix. Could you help me? What should I do? How could I do it? Or could you do it? And it's been, a, it's been the catalyst for a lot of the dialing in videos I've done. It's, I really love getting those messages. And I always love to help um, when I, you know, with whatever time I have to be able to do so. Um, and then the other one is just when we're creating our own presets, right? When we put processing on a preset, maybe we add EQ or compression and we make some changes, some boosts or cuts or whatever, or what have you, are we actually allowing ourselves the ability to decide whether we like the changes we made to the processing or are we just liking it better because it's louder, okay? So we'll, we'll talk about those three things more in depth, but let's talk about that concept. Pretty much in the audio engineering world or mastering world, it's a very, very well-known fact. And this is not my opinion. I'll show you some supporting things I have found online um, that shows um, that when we hear a sound louder, we tend to like it better, okay? For the simple reason, it's just, it, it fools us, right? The lows sound uh, bigger, the highs sound crisper, and we can very easily be fooled that that's, this sound is better than that sound. This is an interesting thing though. I always like to put the, you know, the air quotes around better because let me just preface this whole thing by saying, I don't think it's anybody's business to tell somebody that this sound is better than that sound. You know, this is really a subjective thing down to personal preference. You can take two presets or two modelers, line up 100 people, 50 of them are gonna like one, 50 are gonna like the other. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. And I really always try to express things in that manner that it's my opinion. And I understand some folks won't like it. And that's fine, you know. Uh, hopefully they can tweak some preset that I give them and it, it's, it's a little bit better, you know. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a, not a great attitude to take to just spew out that this is better because I say so. It, it's, I would always be a little weary of anybody saying those types of things as far as, as uh, they almost seem to have a vested interest in you liking one over, over the next. So um, let's look on screen here for a moment. Um, I've found one source online uh, from a, a website called Mastering the Mix, which talks a lot about mastering and, and the importance of doing certain things with it. And you'll notice here it says, why is level matching so important? Well, it says research shows, and you can click the link and it, it, what it comes up with, it says, as you can see, Fletcher Munson Curves, level matching by mastering the mix. So click on that. I haven't clicked through that. I've read many articles like this before. So, but you can, you know, definitely go, don't take my word for it. Research this. This is not stuff that I'm just coming up with. This is well-known facts in the audio community. It says research shows that the human ear interprets louder sounds to have a fuller bass and more clarity in the top end. Put another way, we perceive quieter sounds. Remember that word perceive. We're going to be talking about that a lot. We perceive quieter sounds to be thinner and duller. Even an increase of, notice this, just one dB can create the illusion of a slightly, notice better in quotes, right, mix. Understanding and applying level matching techniques will allow you to make more informed, more objective, and therefore better mixed decisions. Okay, so don't just take it from me. You can find many sources on this. You know, there's a couple of real life examples of this. Um, 
Let's take, we've all probably been to concerts before where the opening band comes out, they play, everything sounds fine. It's an enjoyable show. But when the headliner comes out, whoa, we almost kind of like get blown back in our seats um, because it just sounds so much bigger and fuller. Yeah, well, you know, oftentimes, I'm not saying this happens all the time, but oftentimes the headliner has their sound guy there and he has strict instructions. The opening band does not get the same volume as we do because louder is almost always perceived as quote unquote better, right? They want impact. The other, the other area we see it is with something, if you want an interesting read or rabbit hole to jump down, Google loudness wars. And what happened over many years is mastering engineers were forced into having to deliver masters for radio play and for CD production that were louder and louder and louder in the final mix. They would have to put tons of compression, tons of limiting on just to squeeze out every last bit of volume out of a mix, squashing the dynamics, really ruining the audio, but producers and record labels were demanding it. Reason being, when you know band A's song was on the radio, the band that was following them, they wanted more impact when their song hit the radio, therefore people would feel like, whoa, what, that song's just got something good about it. You're being fooled and duped into believing it's better, again, quote, better, because it's louder, if that makes any sense, okay? So those are some real world examples. And again, like I said, don't just take my word for this. Go to Google and, and go for it on, uh, on reading about this stuff. There's tons of information about it. So this is just so you know it's not my opinion on the matter. So the next question is we say, well, how do we measure loudness? This is a good question. You know, we all have digital audio workstations, DAWs, right? I use Cubase 10 Pro, love it, been with them since way back in Cubase 1 or even VST, whatever it was called before that. Um, some folks use Logic, some folks use Pro Tools, there's a million of them out there. Some of these have something built in called a loudness meter, which measure, measures something we called L, something that we call, sorry, LUFS, which is loudness units full scale, okay? Um, the interesting thing about the way that this kind of meter was developed, it was designed to measure something we call perceived loudness, okay? That's how our ears are actually hearing the sounds. So it's very different than a peak meter uh, that we would have in our, in our normal DAW, okay? Now some folks might say, well, I don't have uh, uh, a uh, LUFS meter, a loudness meter. Well, let me just go back over the screen here. This is one I found online. I've never used this before, but it is a free one. It, it's a plug-in for our, our DAWs and it's called Ulean uh, Loudness Meter. So just to, I'll put a link to that in the description just in case somebody does want to grab it for free. It's always nice to have something where if, you know, if we don't need it for very professional applications, it's just nice to have something that's going to allow us to do what I'm going to show you today, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the different topics I mentioned before, this audio demo idea. There's a couple pet peeves I have when watching audio demos online. And this could be whether it's comparing, like I mentioned, a real amp to a modeler, uh, modeler A to modeler B, uh, preset A to preset B. If we're hearing in a demo where the sole purpose is to compare two different sounds, if we are hearing those two sounds unmatched in volume level or at different volumes, it is a completely useless audio demo. Everybody, just about everybody, almost all the time, will choose the louder one as the quote unquote better one. And again, I, I just have to, to clarify that. I don't understand this use of the word better when talking about subjective things like tone or preference in the sound of an audio file. I've heard tones that I go, oh, no, I don't like that. And then I hear them used after in a song. And I go, you know what? It suited that song. Wonderful. I'm never going to sit there and tell somebody it's bad if that's what they like. You know, somebody likes medium rare steak. Somebody likes well done steak. Nobody's wrong. I might sit there and say, no, I think you're wrong because you like medium rare steak. But that's their business. It doesn't affect me at all, right? So, so there is really no better when it comes to this. And anybody who tries to tell you so, I... I I just wouldn't really take too much trust or faith in what they're saying. But the really important thing is that that audio level has to be matched. Now you say, well, match. Well, we're going to talk about how we can do that with the LUFS meter shortly. How close does it have to be matched? Well, as you notice in the article that I read you, it says the human ear can perceive a difference of even one dB 
and fool ourselves in hearing it. So in the audio community, honestly, we want to get it as close as possible. But I've heard some folks say it has to be within half a dB, 0.5 dB. Some folks want it to 0.1 dB. Very difficult to do sometimes. But I'm going to say if we can be within that ballpark of 0.5 dB for our purposes, we're going to get a much more fair comparison and be able to judge things. The other little, this little side point too is I see a lot of folks um, online, they'll post a video of playing of their, their presets uh, to show how their preset sounds, but it's recorded with like an iPhone camera, you know, and microphone or a cell phone microphone. I mean, everybody can do what they want, that's fine, but it's just to be aware that that's not giving an accurate representation of what the sound is captured in that medium. The other thing is too, a lot of times, one thing I make sure to do in my videos is I record the Helix Direct and then I painstakingly go through after and I edit out the, any audio of me playing my strings that could have been picked up through my vocal mic. That skews a demo too. If I ever see a demo where I'm hearing the vocal mic where the strings are coming through, I automatically discount it as meaningless. If I hear the vocals, uh, I'm sorry, not the vocals, if I hear the uh, levels between the compared files aren't matched, I automatically discount it. I, it's not giving me anything usable. There's other things that can happen. Some folks can, can be doing an audio demo and for one have their guitar volume turned up all the way and then for another one if they have a vested interest in making it sound worse, turn their volume down. I don't know. There's all sorts of tricks we can use. It's, you always want to be aware. So the idea is if we're hearing a perfectly level match between the two, uh, you're going to have a much more accurate representation. You're going to make a, a informed, knowledgeable decision of which one you prefer. Notice I didn't say which one is better. Okay. So the second area too, so very important to keep that in mind. I just, I think that's an important thing to say so that people kind of are educated when they are making these decisions. It can help save us money, right? Maybe we got fooled into thinking we like something because it was played to us louder, right? Anybody who's doing that on purpose is just being dishonest or disingenuous with you. Or if they aren't doing it on purpose, then it just shows that they probably aren't qualified to be doing audio demos because it's not going to give anybody anything usable. Okay, second point, something like my dialing in videos. I pull up a song, there's the, the, uh, the sound of the guitar isolated in the mix. That's why I usually try to find a song that has it isolated so I can really hear it. If my sort of bass Helix preset is much quieter than what I'm trying to dial it into, I have to bring those up to match. Otherwise, I can't even begin to make decisions on the EQ or the compression or how much distortion. It, it, my, my, my entire take on it will be skewed and incorrect. So I have to bring it up. Now, as I add processing, maybe I've boosted the, I have to constantly be adjusting the volume to make sure that when I'm making decisions as to EQ and compression and amount of gain and all these other things, that those, those levels, those audio levels are as close as possible. So I know, yes, they're gonna sound right or no, they're not gonna sound right, okay? Uh, or, or the same or close to the same. Right. So that's super, super important because the reason I bring that up is I get so many folks, as I mentioned before, send me files and say, I'm going after this sound. I've been trying and trying and trying to get it, but I can't seem to get it. Now, I don't know. Maybe they are, you know, in the same ballpark level wise, but that could be a reason why they're having such a hard time with dialing it in is because they aren't matched on the levels. Okay. Now, the third one is let's talk about preset building ourselves. This is what I wanted to use some examples of. Let's go over to HX Edit. What you'll see over here is the control room uh, window from Cubase 10. And if you notice, here it is, is an LUFS meter. Loudness units full scale. I have that turned on. So all the sounds are gonna go through this. They have different settings, momentary max, short term and integrated. The one we're gonna be interested in is integrated. That sort of averages out the loudness over the whole um, sound file that you're playing into it. And that's going to allow us to be able to match things. Uh, one major word here about this preset. I literally threw up a Brit Plexi Norm into a 412 greenback. I think I threw a 121 ribbon four and a half inches back. And I made this preset in about 15 seconds. It's not meant to sound good, bad, or otherwise. It's just as an example, okay? Um, I put a loop at the beginning simply for the reason that in the name of being as scientific as possible. If I'm comparing two files and I'm playing one time, you know, one way, and then on the comparison file I play again, am I hitting the strings as hard? Am I hitting them softer? I don't know. I, I might not even be trying to, but I, I, I just don't know, right? So I want this 
I want us to know that the exact, exact sound is being fed when I'm making my measurements. So I know that that's just one less variable out of the equation. Closer to being scientific, if you will. Um, as I said before, some folks, if they have you know, a preference over one thing that they're, they're demoing over another, they can easily skew it by hitting softer while they play the one that they want to sound better or hit harder on the one and dig in you know, to get more pick attack or whatever on the one that, that they want to sound better. So you see, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. We've always got to take that stuff with a grain of salt. So this here is the proper way to do it where we're feeding the same signal in to the A versus B comparison. Okay, so what I've done here um, is I have an EQ block and a compression block, both turned off right now. Uh, I have a graphic EQ with some fairly dramatic EQ changes. Again, this is not because I want them, I think this sounds good. I just pulled them up so I want to show you what the potential uh, of EQ changes has on the perceived loudness, okay, as well as compression. So we'll keep those off for now. What we're going to do first is we're going to measure the perceived loudness of this loop and I, forgive me for the loop, I just put in a ridiculous power chordy type thing. It doesn't matter what it is, we just want to get the perceived loudness. Um, we're going to get the perceived loudness with the integrated measurement down here of this preset without any extra processing, no EQ or compression. So here is the loop. Okay, so what, what we see is that the integrated loudness comes in around a measurement of minus 20.5. Wonderful, okay. Let's make a mental note of that, minus 20.5. Okay, so now I turn my EQ on and with all these different settings and I wanna see now that, is this gonna make my sound better, right? Well, there's no way of me knowing whether it's going to be better or not unless the levels are matched. So let's listen to it. I'll reset my LUFS meter. Let's listen to it with these particular settings. Listen to hear the difference between them, but we'll, we'll, we'll get our reading on the integrated LUFS for this with the EQ engaged. So we see it's right in around minus 18.6. So what we notice then is the before and after unprocessed is about 2 dB quieter. So all these moves that we made here have actually added about 2 dB of volume or perceived loudness to our sound. So let me AB between the two as such, and you're gonna hear a big jump in volume. So you cannot make an accurate decision of which one you like better because you're gonna be fooled by the fact that, oh, this one's louder, therefore it's better. And it may very well be. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. Or not that it's better, but it's my preference, right? Oh, I like that better. Yeah, we don't know until we match the volume. So, so watch again now. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to start with the, with the EQ off. And watch as I click it on on the screen. So an obvious difference in, in the tone. Now, it doesn't matter about who likes what better. One's darker, one's brighter, whatever. That's not the point. The point is, are we hearing just the effects of the EQ? Or are we hearing a perceived jump in loudness, which would totally skew us having an opinion about it? So what we have to do then is we know from our integrated loudness meter, which I didn't reset, it's meaningless reading now because it's taken an average of on and off, keep that in mind. And I come to my EQ, and I'm going to turn that down 2 dB, which was just about the difference we had in perceived loudness. Now let's go and measure the perceived loudness with the EQ on with the master volume level of the EQ turned down by 2 dB. We should get an integrated reading in and around the minus 20.5, minus 20.6. Let's see. We see as it went through, now we have 
the perceived loudness without EQ and with EQ the same. Now if I AB between the two, we're going to hear just the effect of what that EQ curve did and not be fooled by any jump or, in or, or lessening of perceived loudness. Okay, let's listen to that and see now the difference. So I'll start with the EQ off. Do you hear how much better that is now? Now, I, again, it's not about which one is better or worse. It's about being able to determine what our true preference is because the volume levels are now matched in perceived loudness, at least as close as we can get them using our loudness meter, using our LUFS. Does that make sense? Is that clear? So if I go back now, bump this up 2 dB and do the same thing, I think now you're gonna be able to hear, wow, what a jump in volume, listen. So this is with the EQ off. You hear the difference? So even just a 2 dB difference in volume totally skews our ability to determine whether it's something that we prefer or not, or what that processing is actually doing. And the other thing is I really hope we're listening, you guys are listening on a decent set of headphones or a decent set of speakers to hear the subtleties. If you're listening on a, on a mobile phone or something just through the speaker, it's gonna be very hard to hear those subtleties. So please listen on, on something that's going to be able to allow you to hear those differences. So it's not interesting, right? So you sort of see that's a great example as to how important this is. Okay, let's go over now and do something else that I've done a bunch of times in my uh, presets is the LA Studio comp at the end. A compressor, when set to really squash, uh, the, 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 reduce the dynamics and squash the tone, usually reduces the amount of, of volume we're going to have, depending on the settings, right? Um, we have a gain uh, control on the LA Studio Comp, so that could be adding more gain in. I don't know. So I don't know with these settings what it's going to do. But remember, without any processing, this preset has an LUFS of around minus 20.5, minus 20.6. Let's see what it sounds like with the compressor on. Not only sounds like, but let's measure the integrated LUFS with this same loop. Now, sorry, I have the level turned down here. Let me bump that back up to the default setting, okay? So here we go. We see that we have a jump in about 3 dB of perceived loudness, right? Minus 20.5 without the processing and with the compressor it's minus 17.5. So what I would need to do is come down here, you notice if I play it and I bounce back and forth between the two, you're going to hear a jump in volume because of this gain setting when the compressor is engaged. Here's it with it off. Most everybody's gonna to listen to that and go, oh, the second one's better. But we're not hearing what the compressor is doing to the tone because all we're hearing is a perceived loudness jump, okay? So if I bring my level control down by about three, 3.1 dB, now when I AB the two, actually let's, let's remeasure the LUFS now setting or uh, reading now, what, making that change. It should be in back around that minus 20.5 area. it is, right? We might be able to 
bump it up to just minus three. Okay, so now let's go back and forth between unprocessed and then compressed. Now the perceived loudness is not gonna skew anything for us. We're gonna be able to hear what is that compressor doing to our sound, okay? So here I'll do it with it off, and then I'll do it with it on. Hear the difference? It's not as big a difference anymore, but you do hear that, that compressor just glue the sound together a bit and give it a little bit of squishiness. Is that better or worse? That's not up to me to tell you. I wouldn't be so forward as to, to suggest that I'm right or somebody else is wrong. It really depends on the tone we're going after, our personal preference, maybe the mix we're playing, maybe the band we're playing, maybe the song we're playing. Like, there's so many variables here. Who am I to say that one is better or worse? But at least now we're able to determine if we prefer one over the other. Does that make sense? I hope it does and I hope I was clear about that. I just really honestly think this is a very important topic for a number of reasons. And just to recap, like I said, number one, relying on an audio demo comparison between two modelers, real amp versus modeler, two presets that we, you know, we may be available to purchase we have to have in any audio comparison a fair match, somewhat scientific. If somebody's comparing two presets and you know they have a vested interest in one sounding better and they turn their volume up all the way on the first one and on the one that they don't want to sound as good, they maybe only go up to seven or eight. We'd never know in the video, but if that happens, then it's not a fair comparison. If there's a microphone on that's picking up string noise mixed in with the direct signal of a preset, that's not really giving you an accurate representation, right, um, of the preset. That's why, like I said before, I painstakingly go in and edit out any of the mic signals so when you're hearing the tones in my videos, they are just the direct sound. Um, you know, so the other thing is if in that, that audio demo video of, you know, different amps or different modelers, or different presets, the levels aren't matched like we talked about today. You cannot make an informed decision. And so if you're seeing audio demos like that, there's only one of two possibilities. The person doing the audio demo doesn't know what they're doing. And I hate to say that because it sounds mean or rude, but it's just the fact. They don't have the knowledge to be able to do in the audio demo there for I would take everything with a bit of a grain of salt. Or they're just being disingenuous, possibly dishonest, so as to skew people to feel one way or the other. And I mean, it's a sad thing. I, I would hate to think anybody out there would do that, but there probably are and, and you know it can end up really fooling us and we're not getting an accurate representation of, of, of what should be presented to us to make an informed decision. It's all about education and being able to be informed about this stuff. Second point, if you're chasing a tone you love on a recording, right, and you're trying to dial that preset in, make sure as you're going through the process, the, the level of your target and the level of your preset that you're creating are matched as close as possible. It's going to make it so much easier to be able to get where you're going faster, right? And then like I showed you here, when we're doing our own presets and we're adding processing in, especially if we're doing extreme, more extreme settings, make sure you level match so that you're, if you're A, Bing things, you're going to hear the actual difference of what the processing is doing and not just being fooled that the processing you added is quote unquote better or to your preference simply because it jumped the volume up and we weren't even really aware of that. So just a little video I wanted to do because I think it's a really important point for all those reasons I talked about. And I hope, I hope some folks get something out of it. Um, there's a lot of people that already knew this stuff and it's wonderful, you know, <laughs> it's not the video for you again. But for anybody who didn't, I just think it's a very good piece of information to keep in mind when we're comparing our own presets or watching online demo videos or trying to match some other tone. Anytime we're comparing, of utmost importance is making sure those volume levels have been matched to the closest they can be, right? Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that helps. Please share the video. I think it is important for, for those folks who are involved in any of these things I was talking about to at least understand that and be able to use that as another tool in their arsenal to make good decisions, whether preset making or buying gear or what have you. So 
Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Please like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with some more content. Again, thank you, and uh, we'll talk soon. Ciao for now.